Welcome back. Today we're doing E-Myth from Michael Gerber, Michael E. Gerber. And this book rocks. You know, I always want, used to wonder what made someone wealthy, what made a business really thrive, and I was so naive and so dumb. Anyways, I used to think it was a great idea. If you just had a great idea, like you invented the fax machine or the iPhone or the computer or whatever, you had a great idea, you would make a lot of money. Uh, which was weird because my dad was a builder, a home builder, and then a developer, and then went into apartments and made a tremendous amount of money. And he just did what has been being done for a lot of years. So what is, what is the key to having a successful business? Well, the e-myth is, I believe, uh, maybe not, I don't think it's all of it, but I think it's a tremendous amount. So if you call up a company, let's say you call up... Um, whatever let's say you call up your phone company and for your cell phone and it's huge I think they're all humongous now but say you call I, mine is humongous and <clears throat> I think they have over a hundred million people I expect to find out the person that answers the line to help me with my problem you know if if my bill was higher than it's supposed to be or if my my phone isn't working correctly how in the world do I do that well they have systems and I know this might be basic for everybody. It wasn't. To, it wasn't for me. And this book has helped us tremendously. And matter of fact, we had started uh, the Ten Boom Institute, and we uh, were pulled into the grassroots, and we were teaching um, our Principles of Liberty, which is one of our reading programs, which is totally awesome. So you should get it. <laughs> but anyway, we were doing that, and what happened is we. We didn't. We didn't. We kind of just took off instead of stopping and creating a plan. And you have to create a plan. Matter of fact, you get. And he brings this up in here. You get mad when things are different than you expect. Why does McDonald's thrive? Because I think everyone across the board would agree that the that the, the food is inferior. That it's not. Now I'm sure there's people that absolutely love McDonald's, and I know there are, but. The, the quality of food, etc., is just not as good as, as it could be. But yet people keep going. Why? And I go to McDonald's when I... <laughs> if I can't find a place, I'll go to McDonald's. Why? Because I know what to expect. It's predictable. He talks about here how he goes to this motel or hotel place and he spends the night and he wakes up in the morning and his newspaper... That one that he, they asked him when he checked in, what newspaper do you subscribe? Do you want to watch or read? And it was on his front, it was on his doorstep when he woke up. And how, whenever he went to that city, he was going to stay there. It was predictable. He knew the kind of experience. He had such a great experience. He wanted that. Then he talks about going to a barber and how they offered him a cup of coffee or whatever, and they and uh, and they gave him a shave, and they did, and it was incredible. When he went back. He's like, where's my cup of coffee? Because they didn't offer it to him. And and things were different than they were the first time he went. And so he tried it out a third time. And I don't know if those exact scenario. But then all of a sudden he didn't want to do it. Why? Because he didn't have this predictable experience. And that's what people want in business. That's what consumers want. They want to know if they go to this thing, they're going to get this. And they can always rely on that. It's very, very dependable. Um, they, the service is dependable, the products are dependable, the prices are dependable, and therefore they buy. And when they buy, your business will thrive and succeed. And if they don't, you're out of business. Most small businesses fail, and this is why. That's why it's e-myth, entrepreneurial myth. Why do most business why most businesses don't work and what to do about it? So he talks about starting out. What's your primary aim? So let me flip in here real quick primary aim <clears throat> he goes through he talks about your 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 business being an in infancy and adolescent and and um, and into adulthood I like that you know I think it's the law of the harvest we're such a get rich quick society that um, if we don't have results in our business in six months or a year throw in the towel it's over why because we want the results today it takes, and you think about, you take, a, think about an apple tree. I mean, you plant it, you can start harvesting in three to five years. It does not happen. I mean, they say when you open a restaurant that you should plan on not making any money the first year. 
just you just don't make any money. But you, so you've got a plan. You've got to have the funding. You've got to have the, have have things set up so you can continue through that until it starts to grow. grow um, it starts to produce. Now here's the thing with the apple tree. After three to five years, what happens? If it's been taken care of and you continue to nurture it and continue to, to give it the things it needs to grow, then it produces more. Way more than you could ever eat. I remember growing up, a friend of mine down the street had an apple tree and we would climb up in it and we'd have all the apples we could ever eat and they, I mean, they had bushels of apples. They could never eat them. They had to give them away or can them or just, they just couldn't eat them all. There was too many and you see lots of apple trees like that. There's too many for the people to eat because that's the way, that's a, that's a principle. You, you you reap and you reap and you, or you sow and then you get able to to reap what you sow over time and if you take care of things correctly and live the principles, you reap forever. So, uh, fabulous. So I like how he talked about that but then uh, part two is where I really like about it. Uh, he talks about getting into your primary aim. So, he's talking about a new... But now, he's based a lot of this off of Ray Kroc, founder of McDonald's, and what he did. Um, so, we're going to go to the primary aim. I think that's the first section that I want to talk about, because the primary aim is so key. Uh, you want to... You want to work on your business, and while you're working on your business, you want to work in your business. So he's going to talk about, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me talk about that primary aim. The primary aim is fabulous, because what do you want your business to do? Do you want to work seven days a week? Do you want to work three days a week? When your business is mature and grown, how do you want it? What do you want it to give you? So you have to know that. That's actually part three. Sorry. So you've, it's a developing a business process. So... I'm sorry, I'm messing up here. I'm so excited about this book, and I didn't, I didn't get to it. So your primary aim, uh, he says this, if you were to write a script for the tape to be played for the mourners at your funeral, how would you like it to read? That's your primary aim. So your primary aim, I think, is maybe like your, your uh, life purpose. What is it? And um, then you have to design a business to help you get that. Uh, he said your primary aim will provide purpose, energy, and it will give you the grist for your day-to-day -day meal. <laughs> it's going to be a grind. It's going to be hard. There's plenty of times when I'm like, give me a break. I have to design that web thing again, or I have to do this. It's a pain in the rear at times. But that's if you focus on that primary aim, that's what gets you through that day-to-day. -day. So your strategic objective. You have to set standards. You have to set money standards. He says it's really your. Uh, he says it's not your strategic objective. Objective is not your business plan. It's your life plan. And this is where I messed up before in the primary aim. Primary aim is your mission or your purpose in life. And this your strategic objective is a product of your life plan. So um, he says it's got to be uh, first of all uh, the money. That's your first standard. What kind of money do you want it to produce? An opportunity worth pursuing. Does the business I have in mind alleviate a frustration experienced by a large enough group of consumers to make it worth my while? That's an excellent question to ask. Um, and who is your customer? You have to decide. We've, that was hard for us to figure out. Because we're like, everybody needs a classic education. Everyone should be learning. But you have to hone in on who your customer is. Um, then you have to have standards. And there's no specific number of standards, but you have standards. So I'm going to hurry. I'm flipping through this kind of quick because the book is absolutely excellent. You need to read it if you have a business or want to do a business. Even if you're in a sales position, um, you can apply business principles to your sales. Now, as you as your, biz, as your sales increase, the owner of the business will, will be reaping the most. But you can create a mini, uh, you can create systems and different things in your sales position to, to help you be more effective and to create more money. So you have to have your organization strategy. Now this is where you do your organizational chart. You put CEO, you put uh, president, you put your vice president of marketing, your vice president of production, your vice president of uh, research and development, or whatever you're going to do. Okay, whatever those positions are. And then what I love what he does, and I it's he's so 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 spot on here, is that 
you have to fill out who's who. So if you can see this here, there's your organizational chart. You see it? So you've got uh, the top uh, shareholders, uh, COO, vice president, etc. So I'm the CEO and the president of Tenbub Institute. Audrey's vice president over uh, development, product development. I'm vice president over marketing. I have multiple roles. I'm over the technological side. <laughs> I know I'm not very techy, but I'm over that. So we have to each have positions. We have multiple positions until we have enough profit to where we can place. I'm actually the secretary too. I return emails. I do phone calls. And so when we have the income to replace that, then that person will be hired and and they will take over that and I'll have that less I'll have less responsibility. Very, 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 very important that happens because if you're just one person, for example, we were at the zoo last week and we met uh, a gentleman and he's the president of a company that uh, that that takes that, that, that filters income state taxes, tax money into um, homeschoolers and through a various different ways through through different things that they, they've created it's it's a f incredible idea and he's the president now and he was talking about the owner and how the owner is the visionary and he says the owner is going a thousand miles an hour he wants to do this he wants to incorporate this he wants to incorporate this he wants to do this this and this he has incredible ideas but he's not and obviously he's not a manager because he has to have the systems, and a manager is going to run systems. All times managers will create systems, and if you don't have that in line, then it's going to it's going to tank. It doesn't matter how many incredible ideas. Let me go back to the beginning of this. How I said that business is just one great idea. It's not. If you have the best idea in the world, if you don't have a system run correctly, then you're in trouble. Um, so you've got to be. And when you're at the beginning, if you're a small company, lots of times it's you and you're every position. Uh, it might not be. You might be able to get funding and put a business plan together and be able to get funding and, and you might have 10 people or 20, but everyone has to have a position with designated uh, responsibilities. So, um, then he says, yeah, how, how are you going to manage people? And and then he talks about, and, and I, I didn't really like the end of it, your marketing strategy. I didn't like that much at the end of it, nearly as much. But just the idea, what I got out of this book was you have to have systems. You have to have everyone have a position. And the next thing that I have talked about is you have to have a, it's just left my mind, you have to have a book. What the world's it called? You have to have an operations manual. Okay? So... In one point of the book, he says, and, or maybe this, I went to his seminar years ago, but what he's doing is, I think it's in the book, but he's knocking doors, right? So that's part of their marketing strategy. They're going to knock doors. And so he's knocking doors to sell products, but while he's knocking doors, in his mind's eye, he sees him, he's up here, up clear above, and he sees himself knocking doors. And so what he does is he creates an operation manual. He writes down, okay, in marketing, you're going to go door to door and you're going to knock this many doors and this is what you're going to say here's your script and here's here's here, here's your dem, here's your presentation and it's how you do your presentation and here's your closes and here's how you handle your objections okay and then here's the secretary's role and this is what she's going to do how, how she's going to answer the phone and this is what she's going to say and this is how she's going to respond to emails if there's an email like this she's going to respond this way and all this is written down so in the event that one day you go to work and that person's gone, okay? They fell in love with the multi-billionaire and sailed away. Someone could pick that operation manual up and they can run that person's system systems and without a hiccup. That's why Ray Kroc was so successful because he had systems down to the T. And so that's what you need to do if you want to have a successful business. I think um, we need more businesses. You know, I know that a hundred years ago in America that it was like 90% owners and 10% business people. I mean, 90% owners and 10% employees. And now it's flipped. And I know a lot of that was because if you owned your own farm, you're an owner. And 
you know, there was tons and tons of farming. With, with the Industrial Revolution, then we don't need that as much. But I believe we need more owners. We need more people thinking like owners. We need more people engaging that way. It not only just helps our economy, it also helps our government because owners feel the biggest tax burden and, um, and they want to make sure that things are protected for uh, the rights are protected. So, uh, E-Myth, it is excellent. It really is worth the read. There's part of it's a little cheesy. Him and I think it's Sarah at her coffee, at her pie shop or whatever. And can I have another cup of coffee? <laughs> but it is very worth the read. It's going to teach you the principles of how to s start and create a successful business if you're willing to put in the time, the energy, the hard work, the thinking, the hard work, the creation, and then to to wait for that tree to grow. Just be patient and and wait for it so you can reap the harvest. So. Enjoy. Let us know what you think. Please like us on Facebook and other places, and please tell our people if this was helpful to you. Talk to you soon.